I'm Neil Warder for Kit Guru. Today I'm at Azus UK's head office and I have in my hands a working sample of their ROG Strix RX Vega 64. Uh, Air cool graphics card, Vega 64 graphics chip, obviously. It is fully functioning and I've been using it in 3D Mark uh, and checking thermals in Fermark. Initial impressions very favourable. However, because it's still a work in progress, I can't yet quote finalised clock speeds, which is something of a shame. Uh, in actual fact, there are three of these graphics cards here today. They're going to be taken away to other parts of Europe uh, later today or tomorrow morning. And the ASUS people from Taiwan who have hand-carried these graphics cards here have actually been busy flashing biases uh, this morning. Uh, I understand that uh, another chap who's here um, had the bias updated and the performance leapt by 10%. Uh, this apparently is based on information from AMD today. So this is very much a moving target. So there is no point whatsoever in quoting clock speeds, not that I'm actually allowed to, or showing you 3D Mark scores because they're going to change. And truth be told, it's not actually of massive interest at this moment. Kit Guru will absolutely do uh, reviews of the ROG Strix and other graphics cards from other Adinbor partners. So the precise details uh, we will uh, get to see in the fullness of time, hopefully sooner rather than later. Uh, my guess is going to be that this card's going to go on sale in about four weeks time. Uh, the NDA is gonna lift on this video in a few days time, uh, but actual stock coming through to the channel and so on and so forth, uh, they're gonna have to move very fast to get it on sale in the next few weeks. It's exactly what you expect from a ROG Strix. So you've got a back plate, it's a chunky great big two and a half slot design. We've got two eight pin power connectors and it's triple fan. Uh, it is familiar. And that's actually no great surprise because uh, talking to the Azus people, what they've essentially done is they've reached to the shelf and taken down a 300 watt thermal package. They have a number of designs on the shelf for different uh, wattage and this one required 300 watts. They've gone away and they've got back a package that is fundamentally uh, GTX 1080 Ti. Um, and it, it has some differences because the nature of the GPU in Vega, because it has the HPM2 packages, means that the, the manufacturing and the assembly calls on Polaris technology, uh, which uh, Zeus is well familiar with, uh, because you have to make sure that the cooler contacts both the HPM and the GPU. This is quite important. Uh, I was told actually that specifically the thermal compound they use is, um, they didn't actually use the word gloopy, although that's what they're alluding to. They're kind of saying it's sort of heading towards yogurt territory. Essentially, if you use a very thin thermal compound, it'll kind of pump out over time and that causes problems. You need something that's quite substantial and thick to fill gaps, which was interesting to hear. Azus is emphasising its max contact technology, uh, microfine finish of the copper and such like. This is not a surprise to us and it's what we expect to hear and it's good news. Uh, the thing we're most interested in was how cool the graphics card will be, how quiet it will be, because it has to be said that the stock cooler on the AMD reference card that we reviewed was really poor. Temperatures were high, noise was high, the chip throttled, and um, you will note in our review that we have the base clock speed, the max clock speed, and the average clock speed. And frankly, the average clock speed is what counts, because if you can't hold the thing at max clock speed, frankly, it doesn't really much matter what it is. Now, in the uh, case of this Zeus, the max clock speed is 1630 megahertz, but the point of interest is what does it actually run at most of the time? That is what a decent cooler gives you, is a larger percentage of the potential max clock speed. You're interested in the usable clock speed. And for this card, it's 1500 and something. Uh, how much exactly, as I say, remains to be seen. With the AMD, well, go to our review, have a look. But a AMD, it struggled under heavy load. Also temperatures. AMD allows, I believe, up to 83 degrees. Azus aims for 75. Uh, so it's aiming at being cool and quiet, and the two and a half slot design, which again we've seen before, uh, actually means that once you allow for the fact there are capacitors and such like in there, the extra half slot gives them like an extra 40% of working room in terms of thickness of the cooler. It might not sound a huge amount, but it does make a massive difference. Now of course there is the other side to this particular coin, which is that with NVIDIA, Two-way SLI is now the max supported, therefore two two and a half uh, slot GTX 1080 Ti's. You, you can find plenty of space for those in your PC. 
AMD still supports up to four-way crossfire, so theoretically, you might actually try and put four of these graphics cards in your PC. That seems highly unlikely, but theoretically, it is possible. Uh, so the fact it's two and a half slot could be a limitation. Having said that, if you've got three or four uh, AMD graphics cards in your PC, do send us a photo. We'd love to see it because you are one in a very, very, very small number of people. So the cooler is much larger than the stock AMD cooler. It works better. The temperatures coming out of this graphics card were quite impressive to behold. Uh, under heavy load, it was holding steady at uh, mid-70s. I put the uh, glass panel back on this PC. This is a PC I had to bring with me to put the graphics card in, so I decided to go from the Zeus motherboard with a Ryzen 7 processor. And it's a uh, fractal design meshify case. It's not massively large. Uh, it flows a lot of air. It has a temper glass panel. I put the panel back on just to see how that hurt temperatures and the graphics card got three, four degrees warmer. Um, also the glass got quite hot, which was interesting to feel, uh, but entirely reasonable temperatures and that was under Fermark extreme load. So uh, I'm absolutely fine with that. Uh, Azus says that the thing is, Customers, they don't particularly want their graphics cards to run hot, but what they really want is the graphics cards to be quiet, and I wholeheartedly concur with this. They've worked very hard to make this graphics card quiet. Where AMD will claim a noise level of 43 decibels under a load in 3D mark, uh, Azus says 29 decibels. Now, uh, noise levels in decibels are one measure. Uh, it's actually also the type of noise, how much it varies, the pitch of it, and so on and so forth. This working, shall we call it, prototype graphics card from Asus, it was very, very quiet. That's all there is to it. Stock card annoying, this very quiet. Uh, in terms of performance, it's got two biases. It's got a flick switch, which is there, which uh, you can change modes with. So basically quiet or go, go, go mode, uh, just as um, AMD has. And both modes are faster than the stock modes. So the quiet mode here is faster than AMD's go-go mode, but not by a lot. The, the claims they're making at the moment in terms of percentages are tiny. We'll actually wait and see what the, you know, the final figures are. In a sense, it doesn't much matter. The claimed max extra performance is a mere detail. What we're interested in is the average extra performance. I am utterly confident that it's going to be significantly better with the ROG Strix than it is with the reference card, mainly because the reference card has such a lousy cooler on it. Uh, so check back with Kit Guru for a full review of this graphics card, but uh, it shows huge potential and a lot of promise. Omnia Water for Kit Guru. This is the Asus ROG Strix Vega 64.